In this short video, we're going to look at creating a homework report using RStudio. We've opened RStudio. We want to uh, begin a new file. In this case, we're going to use a markdown file. It's asking for the title of the report, so, so I type in the title. Uh, it's going to be Chapter 3, Problem 12, page 24. I'm going to produce a PDF document <clears throat> because I'm going to want to turn that in and then we'll say OK. R gives us a start of the document. This part up here is going to produce the, the title for the document. Notice that the output is going to be a PDF. This is uh, going to say something about how R commands are, are included. We want to change this to true because we want to show our commands as we go along. Um, this is using some markdown commands. A double hash mark will create a, a new section. And uh, this is giving some examples of, of how the document is processed. So I've removed all of that example stuff and I want to have Uh, a section here called identifying what the problem is and then I want to include the problem in my report so I'll find the problem in the textbook the nice thing is that uh, this is all electronic so I can copy that and just paste that right in here I might need to do some rearrangement of some things and I'm interested to know how this pound sign is processed with the in the system I think I might want to spread these out just a little bit for readability okay so there's the problem copied into uh, copied into my report so now remember that this double hash mark builds another section. So let's build a section called preparing the data. And then we need to have a little bit of an explanation of how the data is prepared. In this case, it's going to be very easy because we can just copy the data and, and paste it into R essentially. So give it a little bit of explanation of how you're planning to prepare that data so that your reader can follow along. And now we want to actually put it in an R command. In uh, this markup language, we can give uh, three back tick marks and uh, braces R, squiggly brackets R, and that that's telling the language that uh, is telling the markdown language that at that point we want to to do some R code. And remember up here at the start, we said that, that we wanted to echo the R code so that in our report, this R code will show up. So I'm going to build an object. Uh, X is a nice name for an object if we haven't used that name already. I want to concatenate the data. Now I want to come up here and copy the data. and paste it in where it needs to go. So I copied the data. I'm pasting it in. Oops. I'm pasting it. Pasting it in where it needs to go. Now notice that there was a, an error here in the text itself. They ended with a comma there. I don't want that comma at the end. I do need a closed parentheses for the oh I already got that closed parentheses so let's make sure we've only got one okay so there I am creating the data and then that piece of information is ended with uh, three tick marks so this is going to be some R code that will be embedded in our document now, periodically, I want to ask R to, to process the data. 
and this is done done with something called knitting <coughs> oh, so it's that's okay I'm using that system and now it's going to ask me to to save this data somewhere so I need to do that so you'll need to identify the directory you're going to put that in probably your documents would be a good place or if you've got some other special place that you're putting it and give it uh, a name and save that document then once that has been saved and and has been named then knitter will process the document and work on producing a result so let's look and see what we've got okay so it's reminding us that we've got the echo set to to true and here we've got the the problem uh, it's missing a little bit of stuff here let me look and see what's happening because I think I said something before I wrote down what the problem was oh we didn't uh, maybe right here I want to say here's a copy of the problem so if I add that and run it or takes a minute to process that and there it is so it's it produces the title it's got the name and the date and everything. Uh, so there's our first section. Here's a, a copy of the problem. Now we're building a second section called preparing the data. The data is already comma separated. So uh, we explained how we, we process that. And so now as this document is knitted, it also runs the R code. And so this process has been done. We've created an object called X. Returning to our studio, okay, so our, our data has been uh, prepared. It was particularly easy munging this, this data. It was already in really good shape. So now I want another section. So now we'll do a section called Calculating Results. To help the reader follow what's doing, I, what's happening, I'm going to just copy the instructions from up here. There's uh, using technology, find such and such down here. I want to. Oh, do you notice this color difference? And see that those three ticks, they were supposed to be up here. So that color stuff is giving you some good clues about stuff. And those three ticks should have been out. And what we're interested in is, oops, hang on. So what I was trying to get at is we're going to copy that. It's one of the instructions that we're actually supposed to do in the problem. And hmm, for some reason it's not copying. So we went up and copied the instruction. And so now we're going to put an R code that will do that job. Remember, it's going to take three ticks, three back ticks, Squiggly bracket. So we're, we need to find the mean. Uh, we've already built this object X that contains the data. I'm going to annotate what I'm doing here. We're going to find the mean of the of the uh, yearly rainfall. And so we're interested in finding the mean. We're going to say X bar is the mean of, of X. And notice that we're uh, documenting what we're doing just so that it'll be easier to read later on. So we're going to need to print that out because we need that uh, piece of information. And And we end all of that with uh, with uh, three tick marks. Now, notice what happens when we run that. It takes a minute for it to process. And then it, pre and then it produces that uh, uh, PDF file. And when it runs through that script, then it gets to that command to print out the X bar, and so it does. It uh, calculates the standard deviation, the command to print out the standard deviation, and it does.
Now, the nice thing at this point is that there is R running in the background, and we now have these objects, X bar and, and SDX. So we'll come back to R Studio, coming back up here and copying that, uh, that next piece of the assignment, and we'll bring it down and put it in place. So now we're supposed to uh, use Chebyshev's theorem to find the interval containing 75% of the data. So let's put a note in here. So we make the note that Chebyshev proved that at least 75% of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean. And so we need to calculate uh, that lower and upper bound. So we'll just simply calculate x bar minus two standard deviations will be two standard deviations below the mean. And of course x bar plus two standard deviations will be two standard deviations above the mean. And that script with the three tick marks and knit that file again. And so there's the output. R is showing us what the script was. Uh, our note about what we're calculating and so on. Let's make a summary note here. Returning to our studio. So we'd like to say that therefore at least 75% of the data falls in the interval and then be able to say what these two numbers are that were uh, printed out. Because this uh, input data might change at some time, we want to have that a calculated value here. So I'm going to modify this and, and build an object called lower bound, LB for lower bound, uh, which is the lower bound, and ask it to print out that lower bound just for our report. Save the upper bound in an object called uh, UB and ask it to print the upper bound. So we can recall any, <clears throat> in line, we can recall any previously calculated variable or, or object by just a backslash R, so it's going to R to find it, and uh, that object that we created, lower bound, comma, in, in those uh, little brackets, R, uh, upper bound, and then knit that. So now we've got that comment, therefore 75% uh, uh, lies within those intervals, See, there's that lower bound. It's just printed it there for us, and there's the upper bound, and it's printed that for us. Now let's return to our studio, and we've got a final comment to make in this one. We want those that are within 88.9%, uh, and that's within three standard deviations. So that's going to be especially easily easy because we'll just need to to modify this code and notice that we can just copy that whole block of code and uh, insert the instruction here. So I copied the code and I'm going to worry about the lower bound now being three standard deviations below and the upper bound being three above and then it will calculate that other part. Let's run up here and grab this uh, as part of the assignment and put it right here. So what I want you to see is that it was really easy because we knew what it was that needed to get done to to say what this interval was, and the only difference was uh, when we wanted 89% uh, <clears throat> uh, better add a comment here. Okay, so Chevy Chef proved that 88.9% 9% of the data falls within three standard de deviations of the of the mean, and so there we are, three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above, and therefore 88.9% of the data falls within that interval. So let's knit that, and there we are, we're all done.